My name's Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional mountain bike tester for over 21 years. And today, I'm up high in the Yorkshire Dales with the high bike Exduro All Mountain 3. 160mm travel front, 150mm travel rear, all round E trail bike. And one of the great things about having that extra E bike battery life and range is that you can properly get out and explore. And you can see my tracks there. I've already been up here, just checking it out. Shooter's track, way up high on the moors. It's access area. You're not worrying about the fact that you've gone up a dead end or it didn't work out because you've not wasted riding time. And these 2.8 inch tires give me plenty of footprint in the way here. Oh, well impressed with this fender as well. Good work, Mr. Crud. Drop a post might not be the prettiest thing, but it does the job. And while the geometry isn't super radical, it's nimble enough to get little bits of sheep's rack when you find them. Nice and interesting. <laughs> oh, great little piece of kit for exploring this. If it gets too steep even for the uh, 2.8s to gain purchase, then you've got walk mode. Look at that. <laughs> She's off. Oh, crawling her way out automatically with ghost pedaling. <laughs> So even though you don't have a sport mode, just Erie NTB and then tour, there is enough torque and grunt in tour to get you up even horrible sections like this one. So even if you're conserving battery life, it doesn't mean you're stuck on what kind of gradients you can tackle. 75 degree seat angle sets up an efficient climbing position for really steep stuff as well. Although to be fair, temptation to hit EMTB is pretty large. <laughs> and high bike have been developing and investing in e-bikes heavily for a long time. Longer than pretty much anyone else. And very early into e-bikes, off conventional bikes. So there's a lot of really neat features. You've got the sand cast, gravity, casing on the bottom which holds the whole bottom of the bike in a kind of lightweight but really strong claw. There's actually sand cast in a mould and then they rotate it to make sure you get full metal penetration all the way around and then actually x-ray them to make sure they're all as strong as they should be. And together with that SES higher pivot means they can create a really short back end on the bike. Well, short for a Bosch anyway. So it feels more like a conventional bike. Also means they can get rid of the mounting plates. So it's a lighter motor. That in-tube battery doesn't just look neat. Drops the centre of gravity down low again. So bike handles well. These Bosch versions have got the new chassis with that in-tube battery. The Yamaha bike, which is cheaper than this, has a conventional drive chain. It hasn't got the SES pivot and roller. And also it's a lot shorter in reach. And this new Bosch motor, definitely a lot quieter than previous ones and that's at a time when other motor systems are getting a bit louder so if you're just twiddling along without massive amounts of torque going through certainly not too intrusive 75 newton meters of torque on this Bosch Performance CX pretty much standard there's a fly-on version of the old mountain which gives you 120 newton meters and a 700 watt hour battery if you really really want top performance out of this chassis but this Bosch, well proven system supported by a lot of dealers globally. Now I've had, I've had a couple of glitches on this. Uh, crank fell off on the first ride on it and we've had occasional battery. And I've had occasional battery cutout issues. That seems to be an occasional feature on the new Bosch, even with the in-tube stuff. But it's certainly a lot more reliable than the old sort of saddle batteries that you used to get. But the traction, as you can see, just no drama at all up here. Wet, loose, rocky. Not an issue. Bit of grind. Just about feel that top roller because it's only a 12 tooth. And the smaller drive sprockets wear faster than a standard chainring as well. So you got to factor that into living with Bosch. But otherwise, the way it lets the suspension track up here 
without any interference from the pedaling. Outstanding. I never think you're going to see that on a lot of other bikes. High bike have been doing it since 2013, so very early in the high idler technology. <laughs> there come some proper motorised boys up behind me. I think they've got more than 75 new metres of torque behind them. Try and give him a run for the money, eh? <laughs> These stalls that I make it, I'm gonna howl with laughing. In terms of battery life, it's a bit of a it's a question that people always ask, but it's a bit of a how long is a piece of string sort of setup. Obviously, if you're doing a lot of this, we're gonna get about two hours or so in cold conditions. But if you nurse it along, it's two or an eco more, then Five, six hours, not a problem. 50, 60k, yeah, perfectly doable. And having that extra 250 watts is certainly a big bonus going up climbs like this. <laughs> but I would say one thing with the Bosch, make sure you don't push your luck too far with the battery because if it does run out, you are powering the whole bike as, and you're turning that motor around and that gets really miserable so as soon as you're down to one bar i'd definitely turn it around and get home certainly handles well 66 degree head angle give me a nice bit of stability and it's still agile enough that you can manual it and pop it when you need to but stable enough you can get it right over maybe a shorter stem if you're really, 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 really chucking around through corners a lot. Go on, get over, get over, get over. Yeah, here you go. But apart from that, got those big Aaron Gwynn hybrid piston brakes. 150mm travel on the back. Really smooth. With that pulley system in there. You've got that long stroke deluxe shock. That four bar linkage, giving a nice easy ratio. It's super easy to set up. All I've done is set up sag on this and it's been absolutely golden since then and you got that 160 mil front yari impressively smooth really with all this weight behind it same debonair air spring same 35 mil legs as a lyric the only thing you're lacking compared to its big brother is that uh, charger damper and it can easily install that if that takes you fancy, so. I mean, they've sanitised this descent, unfortunately, but still a good crack, especially on a bike as capable and enjoyable as this high bike. And for four grand, you're getting a really good all round cost effective spec. The Yari fork, the rear shock, drivetrain's perfectly adequate, the frame itself is well worth upgrading. In terms of geometry and features, these Aaron Gwynn brakes are e-bike proof. It's got a good sturdy wheel set. Tires are good. Maybe reinforce them if you're doing a lot of rocky stuff, but standard trail work. Plenty to your grip, plenty of float. And the handling. Most important thing, because you can't really upgrade or downgrade that, is absolutely spot on. So, a couple of bitches, but overall, Really, really impressive. High bike. Exduro or Mountain 3. Really well sorted, affordable package. Whether you're going wild round your bike park or uh, out in the wilds like I have been today. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Definitely go for the uh, Bosch bike. Certainly on the affordable ones if you can't go on to the fly on ones. Because that's this is the chassis you want to be going for. This is the geometry, these are the features that really make this bike pop. Thanks for watching, thanks for sharing, thanks for liking. Any comments or questions, get busy in the comments bar below. If you want more exclusive content on this bike and a bunch of others, consider subscribing to Patreon. For $3 a month, you get a whole load more content on that. Thanks for your time, thanks to Rally for supporting the video, and hope you've enjoyed it. Plenty more to come as we head further into 2019.